In this video, I'll be talking about how to use the extrusion tool or a different way to uh, cut up C channels, plates, and pieces like that. Now, in other videos, I might refer to this as actually an older way of doing it, and I just say that because that's the way I catted uh, in my VEX season, and since then we tried using the plugin instead. Uh, because this is just easier for beginners and CAD to pick up, but uh, older, I mean older usually is a negative connotation of like saying, oh, it's outdated. It's not really outdated, it's just a different way of catting in VEX, and it's more closer to the way people cat in FRC, so learning how to cat this way might be helpful, and it also Oh, it gives you some benefits like being able to use the mirror tool on pieces you cut up this way and also being able to use the bend tool on pieces you cut up this way. So let's get into it. Um, so usually we use the v3 library when we're using the plugin, but uh, we'll be using the v1 library instead. Now the key difference between these two libraries, I'm going to throw it on folder, is that the V3 library has uh, these sketch points all at the center of these pieces. And while you could do what I'm about to do to the parts in the V3 library, the V1 library does not come with any of these pieces. And I'm opening up this piece so you can see, right? There are no sketch points in the center of these holes, which can create a challenge in dealing with point-to-point uh, -point pieces, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Um, but it's not, not something, just something to keep in mind, right? And you can cut up the parts in the V3 library this way, but then, uh, you know, the piece will start with a dot for all the holes, and you cut away some of the holes, and those dots are still going to appear there. That's something that's usually corrected by the uh, extension tool, but we're not using extension in this case. So generally speaking, you want to use the V1 library, okay, for cutting up pieces this way. So, all right, here I've imported a 35 long C uh, 2 by C channel, right, and things are going to be a bit different. So at the start, you will see this uh, 8 or chain symbol here that represents a link. Now a link uh, is just means that whatever you see here is the same thing as in the source file we import from. Usually when you use the plugin uh, the link automatically gets broken by the plugin but in this case we are going to have to manually break it if we want to edit this piece. Okay say I Something to note, like say I import another different C channel, okay, and then I break the link on one of those two. So let's just go ahead and do that. Right. Just pull down two inches over there. Right. I, I can break the link on one of these C channels, and it's not going to break the link on the other, okay. And, you know, I talked a bit about component referencing, so you want like C channels that are always going to be the same link to be copies of each other. Well, uh, just keep that in mind when you break the link on which piece. So like if I made a copy of this uh, C channel with the link, I put it over here, and then I break the link on the one I copied it from. Uh, it's not, these two are not actually linked, that's just not how it works. Uh, but after you break the link, right, on this piece, and then I make a copy of it, you'll see by the name version 1 colon 2 that these two pieces are linked together in that kind of way. If I make a change to one of these components, the same change is going to be applied to the other components. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of these three C channels. We don't need them. Uh, delete. Okay, for the sake of explaining how this works. Now there are two ways to extrude cut a C channel. I'll show you both ways. Start with the way uh, that, I don't know, usually I don't do it this way. I'll explain why, but this works 
perfectly fine if you know exactly where you want to cut to. So it's a 35 hole long C channel. Now let's say we want to cut off five holes. You select a rectangle. You go, after going to sketch mode on sketch mode, you always click on this top face. Okay, you align to this triangle bit here. If you're not doing that right, you want to cut four holes off. You align to the center hole like this. Okay, or another way to do it would be to draw the rectangle in and then like, you know, dimension this properly. That's another way to do it. I'll just show how that's done. Uh, but generally, you know, if it's five holes, I just like to line to this triangle, go here, go here. Uh, if you follow good CADing convention and you want to fix this, you should either put in that dimension or you know you aligned it to that triangle there. You just click the fix constraint uh, and it'll be fixed like so. Okay, and then you can click in a sketch just like this, cut away a piece. Okay, and it's gone. And if I make a copy of it, It's like that, right? And if I were to edit this sketch and get rid of these fixed constraints, select all this and fix, right? And I dimension this here, not even five inches. Uh, okay, <laughs> mix in this line here, click on a sketch. Uh, now you'll see it's cut away 10 holes. This is because of parametric modeling in the timeline. Basically, when I make that in the sketch, uh, everything else that happens after that sketch gets recalculated by Fusion 360, including the extrude that happened after the fact. And then now it's cut 10 holes instead of 5 holes, right? Uh, so that is one way to do the extrude. I'm going to kind of see all this. Oh, whoops, went too far. There we go. Okay, so that's one way to extrude. Um, one way to extrude. Oh, it's something to note. Whenever you create these sketches to cut up a piece, you should always, I didn't do that earlier, you should always activate your component. So activate this component and then create your sketch like that. Okay, I, I like to create a rectangle. I don't even bother constraining this because it's just going over the surface uh, like this. Okay, and then I select this surface and this surface. Okay, and while extruding, I drag the arrow backwards. Uh, by the way, if this extruding is not working, like it's not actually cutting away, make sure your operation is cut. And I can make this whatever distance I want. Right? Let's say I want to cut away five holes, so that's 2.5 inches. Uh, and then that's done. And now, the reason why I like cutting it this way instead is, um, let's say I want to change how much I cut. I can edit the extrude and type in a number. Of having to oh, oh that's a bit far. Instead of having to open up the sketch, and I can change how much it's cut away. Now there will be times when one cutting method is favored over another. Like when you have a bunch of C channels bunched together, uh, because you've already created your structure, you've already put together maybe a dry base or maybe a tower of some sort, uh, and you want to make sure you're not you're only cutting away a specific C channel and not other C channels uh, you will maybe depending on like the pieces around a certain piece you will decide to either cut the piece one way or another but you know if you know what you're doing like you put this piece in uh, you broke the link you cut it yada 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 okay and then after you cut it then you put it uh, in a certain place, uh, you're going to, you know, not run into too many problems because you're cutting this piece, hopefully not beside other pieces. Now there is a catch here, uh, and that's if I 
do a demo by inserting another one of these. Okay, and let's say this is the base structure end. I wanted this piece here. It's part of the dry face. And now I'm like, oops. Okay, make sure you always are activating the correct thing when importing. So I activate the main file. Okay. And let's say, uh, yeah, this is the dry face. And I want to point to point the tower. Okay, so I can move this, uh, rotate it, oops, doesn't matter too much, rotate it like this, rotate it like this, okay, and then point to point. Uh, you will notice that there are no center holes, so some things to know about point to pointing. Uh, if it's to C channel, C channel, what I do is just side of one of these holes, the side of one of these holes. All right, and that, that does work. Okay, and then, you know, after the fact, you can remove this to the correct place and drag this along if I wanted to. Uh, you'll notice I moved this, okay, and I, I did not, like I've said in other tutorials, uh, immediately move the piece into the correct place. And you can still do this actually properly. Like I could put a, I could have put this 35C channel here and then create the sketch and then cut it afterward. But it sometimes, uh, this happens more often when you're not using the plugin, you accidentally cut the piece first and then and you're like trying out different lengths or you don't want to cut the piece beside a whole bunch of other pieces because you're going to cut into other pieces. Uh, that's right, if you're extruding your rectangle and the rectangle goes becomes a rectangular prism right and it but and it called the red area covers other pieces it might also cut away those pieces and you don't necessarily want that so in this case uh, after you move the piece you'll want to click capture position so that it saves the position of the current pieces okay uh capture position is a funny thing the more times you do it the slower your file is going to get so you want to do this as infrequently as possible, right? So catters will go at lengths to get around having to capture position. So again, a different, just to be clear, a different way I could have done this is import the 35C channel, point to point it to this place, and then after the fact, break the link, uh, draw the rectangle, and do the cut, like I showed earlier, okay? Just something to keep in mind. Now, uh, like I said, you can, with these pieces, you can use the mirror tool, that's shown in the mirror video. Uh, you can also use the bend tool on these pieces, or more like you can bend these pieces and then cut after the fact if you want to do that for some reason. And I decided I will demo this in this video. So let's say, uh, which point is that? Okay, yeah. Activate this one, create a sketch on this surface. Okay, and line it up with this triangle here. I'll draw this giant rectangle. Okay, and I select this, select this, and I decide I want to cut away all of that. Okay, now this plate is too wide. And you're not going to be able to use the VEX uh, plugin on one of these pieces and then use the bend tool on it. That's just not gonna work properly. And the same thing applies to using the mirror tool. And yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. You don't get to automatically modify the length of parts, but it gives you, it allows you to use like uh, normal fusion tools on these pieces because you're actually using uh, the tools in fusion intended to do these processes like the extrude tool instead of using some kind of external plugin that we just chuck on to make Fusion easier for beginners to CAD. So that's the extrude tool.